In this video, we're going to talk about why Resident Evil is currently Netflix's worst rated series. Were you a fan of the video game Resident Evil? Then you must have been waiting for its series adaptation to come out just as much as we were. But we don't think any of us were expecting it to turn out this bad. Now, let's get to it. Starting with the Resident Evil TV show, an adaptation of the video game. Although successful video game adaptations are usually difficult to produce, the game has persevered in its efforts. A ridiculously over-the-top action series called Resident Evil has attempted to make pretty direct adaptations adaptations of the game's ideas, characters, and settings. It has even attempted to bridge the time between the games. But RE lacked the tension, mystery, and eerie atmosphere that made this franchise one of the most adored online gaming series of all time. Despite numerous attempts to recreate it in other media, the show is perhaps the worst series to date. Given that the show is divided across two distinct timelines, it at least has a notion that jumps out as an intriguing possibility. One tale is set in 2022 and follows Jade and Billy Wesker, the 14-year-old daughters of Dr. Albert Wesker as they settle in a community called New Raccoon City, which is managed by the Umbrella Corporation. The second tale takes place in 2036, when zombies have taken over the globe. Adult Jade is attempting to discover a solution to this issue, while also evading the Umbrella Corporation and making her way back to her family. Netflix's series exploits the game's backstories as part of its plot, and for the most part, it succeeds, even though it isn't used as frequently as it arguably ought to be. Fans of the game have a lot of questions just about the premise itself. Don't worry, all of these issues have incredibly obvious answers. However, the audience must first sit through some of the Wesker family's most dull and lifeless drama and Umbrella's more absurd antics. Next up, why do we dislike Resident Evil? The show, which had promised to deliver a series consistent with the plot and aspects already set in place in the video game franchise, fell short of our expectations. The show was insistent on juggling many tonal and storytelling inconsistencies. While some of us may have legitimate concerns about a teen-focused drama set in the grimy RE universe, the misinterpretation of the series' loyal following is is by no means the Netflix series' greatest mistake. Sometimes, we forget the very guidelines that the show established. The two timelines in this adaptation are constantly clashing and at odds with one another. There were times when they completely undid entire character moments. For example, we saw that young Jade Wesker, played by Tamara Smart, sees her father sacrificed fatally. Now, if the show hadn't already established that Jade wasn't present for her father's sacrifice, or even aware of his death in the future, this would be a significant part of the Resident Evil climax. Is it the lowest rated series yet? With over 30 13,000 votes, the overall rating for the series is now 3.6 out of 10, with the first episode receiving an even lower rating of 3.4. That rating for a Netflix series is among the lowest ever found on IMDb. Whoa guys, we might have hated it a bit too much. And the pain didn't end there. All of us were so disappointed that we continued to vent our frustrations in the comments and review section. We feel that the only thing the show had in common with the game was its name. Later, some of us went on by comment that this was just a poor revenue grab to entice all us gamers out there. We don't see where they were wrong about this. Just in case you were expecting this to be one of those instances where the critics and we have opposite reviews, this is not it. The critics hated it just as much, or maybe even more. When sharing their views of the eight-episode series, they didn't hold back either. The Rotten Tomatoes reviewer score is at a pitiful 51%, with an average score of 5.8, while the viewership rating is down at 25%. It really can't get worse than this. Lesson learned, guys. If we're going to recreate a popular franchise for a video game, we gotta be damn sure we're doing it right. Finally, can we see a season 2 in the making? If you finished watching this season, you may be wondering if it's renewed for another season, or was this where we say our goodbyes? Well, continue watching and we'll let you know what we know so far. So far, everyone has had different reactions to Resident Evil. Some truly adore this new direction, while others detest it. Us viewers, though, are heavily biased against loving this. The fact that nothing is resolved at the end of this book, though, makes it virtually scream for a sequel. So, because of the suspenseful cliffhanger on the final episode, there has been a discussion about Netflix producing a second season. But as of now, only time will tell if the response has hurt its chances. Given how different this is from the original material and the general response, we believe Resident Evil won't be renewed for a second season. But given that six of the seven writers have little to no experience in screenwriting, Netflix might decide to continue this one with a smaller budget. And now for some other news. Brisbane holding the filming of the Netflix series, Boy Swallows Universe. Beginning next month, Brisbane, Queensland will serve as the location for the Australian set fantasy drama, Boy Swallows Universe. The series, which is being made by Brouhaha Entertainment for the Netflix streaming service is a televisual version of Trent Dalton's worldwide bestseller, Boy Swallows Universe. According to Dalton, the plot centers around a little boy who, on Christmas Day, is instructed to break into Brisbane's notorious Boggo Road prison to save his mother's life. The youngster receives this instruction from a message on a red rotary phone in a hidden underground room, and so it follows the working-class Brisbane teenager Eli Bell through a fast-paced narrative of drug addiction, ex-cons, poverty, violence, and the discovery of 
hope through the strength of love. The fastest-selling Australian debut novel in history, Boy Swallows Universe, was originally released in 2018 by HarperCollins. Later, a theatrical play adaptation of it was made. Next, we have School Tales the series, an anthology of Thai horror stories arriving in August 2022 on Netflix. An upcoming Thai horror anthology series on Netflix is called School Tales the series. James Tanadol Nuansut, Tom Puripong Sai Sikiu, Songsak Mongoltong, and Mike Fontaris Chotkij Sadarsapan are the co-directors of the eight-part series. Now that the teaser has been released, it's official that School Tales the series will be accessible worldwide on Netflix starting on August 10, 2022. The anthology's eight episodes will all be available when it debuts. The eight-part television series is based on eight horrific comic book tales. It has been created in a manner that will frighten everyone off the school grounds at night. There is a girl who jumps to her death, a haunted library, human flesh-based food in the cafeteria, a headless ghost in the school warehouse, a chamber full of demons, a spiteful demon in an abandoned structure, and a classroom where only the dead attend lessons. Get ready to confront a new type of fear. The students own the school during the day, but it's a whole other story at night. And finally, will Netflix release Riverdale Season 6 in August 2022? Do you miss Riverdale? It looks like we don't even have to ask. We can't seem to get enough of the show. Something about that wild town and all its antics. The sixth season will air in the United States in August, which is wonderful news. Don't worry, we're aware that fresh episodes have been eagerly anticipated by all of us. In October 2021, the massive streaming service added Riverdale Season 5. In November 2021, The CW, the network that hosts the program, debuted the sixth season. Those of us who have cable have also been able to enjoy weekly releases, but Netflix users haven't been as fortunate. KJ Appa plays Archie, Lily Reinhardt plays Betty, Cole Sprouse plays Jughead, Camilla Mendez plays Veronica, and Madeleine Patch plays Cheryl in the well-liked CW sitcom. Are you anticipating the return of your favorite characters to your screens? Fortunately, the wait is soon over. Sunday, August 7th, 2022 marks the release of Riverdale Season 6 on Netflix. Just one week after the season's 22 episodes, the CW finale on July 31st, the streamer is adding the 22-episode run to its library. New seasons of the network series are available to view on Netflix eight days after the finales thanks to a contract the two parties have. That extra day must have been acceptable to the CW. Hey, the sooner those episodes arrive, the better off we are. Superpowers, witches, time travel, and a whole lot more are all part of the sixth season's wild adventure for the audience. Given everything that has occurred, we're not sure what will be left for them to do in the seventh and final season of the show. We can only wait and see at this point. That's a wrap for this video. What did you think of the series? Did you think it's the worst show on Netflix yet? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one. This.